Bye. So am I. We're That's... live and nobody's watching. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Why? Look how many numbers are there. That doesn't matter. I'm well, they watching. listen. Yeah, now watching. They listen. They listen online. They just don't watch the live, which is why. I know we're going to not be doing live anymore. We're gonna just now record and then have people watch. Yeah. So now Here. it's not necessarily the first Tuesday of the month now, just because we're gonna change up the formatting a little bit, just to focus on the Spotify and online streaming sites and our Apple teams. And it's, it's really going to work a little bit better in our favor because we want to make sure we get the right guests. And sometimes having guests during the live portion is a bit more challenging. And we found they're able to usually come on a, at a different time. And you know, we want to work with their schedules as well. Do you so. want to first in introduce ourselves or that I'm supposed to do now for you? And now we're going to go to our intro. <laughs> this is the Elevated Great Podcast. Elevated Great Podcast. With your host, Seth. Your host, Seth. And stylist, oh, yeah. Fashion Bindra. It's time to get started. Let's talk fashion, shall we? Elevated Great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. This is your host, Seth. For, and I actually did it. I actually like, introduced you. And he's here. I was about to say this is your host. No, um, this is your DJ TNT. So the funny thing is, you introduced who I am, we didn't introduce the show. So welcome to oh, yeah, there you go. I'm your host, Seki. <laughs> and I'm Stylist Ratchet Bindra. This is why I start, because it allows us to have a normal, proper intro. This was a normal, you proper intro. You got excited about a half intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited in general about life. So, so a quick thing here. So th for those that are, are watching, my head's down for a reason, because I just want to make sure my phone doesn't lock. No, he's bunch, just like very snobby. We had a bunch of technical issues today, mm -hmm. and this is why you're seeing all this equipment looking like dead robots in the corner. And we're not using it. We're not using it. Um, we had some technical issues, but we had a backup, and that's what we're using now. Hopefully, the sound quality is where we need it to be, and it comes out properly. So, if you're listening on a streaming site and the sound quality is not the best in this podcast, it's for that reason. We have a bit of uh, some technical issues, and we're dealing with them, but we'll fix them for the next one. I'm um, lazy. So, let's get straight into our topic. So, we actually attended. Um, an event last weekend. Well, Rashi got to attend both days. I, I was unfortunately only avail available to attend one. Uh, it was a launch pad with... Um, at a launch Daniel pad summit. Launch pad summit at Daniel's Artscape in downtown Toronto. And so what they essentially did is they put together a two-day workshop or conferences with various speakers from different industries within the arts. So whether it's photography, Entertainment, whether it's entertainment, music, uh, yeah, music fashion. Uh, online, fashion, everything. Like they, everything. They, they really covered almost every topic. And they had some really cool speakers in there. So they had um, Rondi Hollow Jefferson from the Raptors, which was great. Uh, so he was really interesting, a lot a lot funnier than I thought he would be. Yeah, he was actually, I was like, he was oh very God. entertaining. A little I'm shy, good. you could tell he had a shy side yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was quite entertaining. So he was quite interesting to watch. Actually, our goal is to hopefully get him on one of the podcasts because I think he has, he has a very strong... Uh, passion for fashion. Um, he actually that was not on purpose. <laughs> I, did, I did not do that on purpose. Yeah, no, he's he's very passionate about it. I think what I loved was like when people asked him the difference in dressing in Brooklyn and here. He he was trying to be so diplomatic. Politically correct about it. I uh, don't I was both dying. <laughs> <both dying. laughs> no, so yeah, he he was quite good and. and his take on fashion is quite interesting, so I'm hoping we can make somehow make that happen yeah. and get him on to the podcast. And this is also one of the reasons why we have to adjust our timings, because a lot of these folks that we want to get on just can't yeah, come and, to and, live hour, right? And I think that also speaks um, volumes about us and how we have grown from when we started a podcast to like where we are today. And we're still in our first, it's still less than a year for us doing this, so um, I think that that will also like evolve as as it continues. Yeah. And then the going. second day at the launch pad, they had uh, Director X. As the Which you player, missed, like a loser. I, I had to miss that one, unfortunately, due to some existing commitments. But that's okay. We were there representing and, and you took it in. Our friend Umbreen was speaking at one of the panels. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm just going to pause you. I'm going to cut you off right here. I'm going to work with that girl one day. Yeah. I've said it. I'm going to make it happen. So, and I, and you know what, for, for those who do follow me on Instagram and stuff and, and who know me and those who don't and who are getting to know my amazing personality. Um, <laughs> There's zero cockiness happening in this podcast. 
<laughs> what I what I like I, I've been going through this like very uninspired spell for like I think since like September like I've just been like saying I want to pick up my bags and just leave and like well, it's in, it's in, travel it's the in, world it's in waves because there's certain points where all of a sudden you're very excited and inspired and then later in the same day you're like I'm, it's gone well I, I think it's not the consistency that you used to have it with is what I mean yeah and and that and well and that's the thing right? it's it's to bring that consistency back because when you're when you're so like when your mind is in so many different directions like i'm used to being inspired in all those directions not like 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 the waves right at, at the moment but hearing her conversation and hearing how she creates through emotion and how like, like even when she spoke about her project with like that uh director x like she like like she said that yes he he went through his trauma so, so so this is why he stands for sort of things but she's like that wasn't enough for me just to you know work with him i had to really get down to the root of this problem and that's how we created what we created and for me that was like holy shit like we can do this like we can yeah. actually be like you 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 are so passionate about what you do you're so you're such a believer in creating stuff and you don't have to be um like like you can be a painter and say this is what i want to do and then work with someone like her and infuse technology and then create something amazing and all the tips and stuff that she was showing so after that i was like okay you know what that inspiration that that i was lacking for like these three months is back it's finally back so i'm reading so for folks that don't know who i'm reading she's a she's an art designer but she's very unique in the way she designs her art and it's it's on a quite a large global scale yeah. i can't mention all the artists she's worked with but a lot of amazing artists that are globally known and some of the top artists in the world. She's created set designs for their live shows, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and obviously, as she mentioned, because that was live there, so she has worked yeah. with Director X uh, and a few others. So she's, you know, she's she's up there in in, in that world. But it, it go, but it, you know, we talked, we had a conversation today with one of our other partners we're doing some projects on, and it really goes back to her work ethic and her vision. Like she's true to it. Yeah. She sticks to it. She's not trying to run with the, you know, what's trendy, what's new. She's like, this is. This is what's going to work. This is what I believe in, what I'm passionate about. And she, her work ethic is incredible. And, and you know what? And I, so let's uh, fast forward a bit and then we'll back, backtrack a bit. Uh, just to like, take away from that, that part of, of what you said. Because now, because you weren't there on the Sunday, um, a lot of the conversations that were there, there, were, there was a similar pattern in, the, in all their messages and all these people who are doing such amazing things if you were to go on their social media, they have like 600 followers. You know what I mean? Like that's it. Like, like it's, 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 that's when it, it clicked to me. I'm like, it doesn't really necessarily matter how many followers you are, but look at what they're achieving. And for that, you actually need to be true to what you're doing and like true to yourself. Yes. I understand if your goal is to be an influencer, that's very different, but like an everyday person, you don't need to care anymore about what happens on your like social media. Uh, I'm, I'm so this is a lot of the messaging from the, and, the folks that were speaking that day? I mean, that's what I got out of it because mm -hmm. all the people that I kind of barged my way in pure Rashi style to like make that introduction, exchange, you know what I mean, contact information and say like, I'm going to send you an email and I, and I want to work with you and all, and, and all those things. If you were to go on their personal like, like social media, um, it's not a, it, like they right. They're not. They're have. not influencer level in terms, and, of, in terms and, of followers. But but see what they are doing, right? See what they've built. Like see how much hard work they've put into to 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 stuff. And yes, the conversation around social media is there. I'm not saying it's not there, but um, like I've like I don't post anymore every other day on my feed. My stories is different because that's just what I do, and it's like silly things. Uh, or stuff that's relevant, but if you've noticed, I actually now don't post that that frequently anymore on my social media because I'm like, I don't care anymore. But well, I think it's also what the right? goal is, right? Like your goal um, is your goal is different, and your and your the way you're targeting your growth is different. It's not necessarily right, so, but again, you get a lot of that, business through through social media, but it's not you're not using that to build your primary market because your primary market is your network, the people you're talking to, these events you're going to who you're meeting and, and how you're collaborating. And it's, it's my actual work, yeah. right? Which is not also shown all on my social media. Some sure. of it is just word of mouth. Like I was talking to um, this designer, mm -hmm. like, well, this brand that I started working with and he messaged, he messaged me uh, earlier today and he's like, oh, no, no, so I was talking, so I spoke to this actress about doing a photo shoot with our stuff. I'm like, oh, really cool, who? And, and he told me like, 
at who she was and I've styled her before and I've only worked with her once and he was like she, and he's like the minute I said your name to her she said I'll be down to She's this it. because she spoke so highly of you right. and I'm not bragging here but I'm just saying like and it's not like no, I go on like my like social media and I'm like oh my god see I'm doing this like see I'm doing yeah. that my it's literally when you're so passionate about what you're doing and that's your focus <clears throat> it it does show, it does show. The, the word spreads around it doesn't matter how which how many events you attend it matters about when you are the at, connections you make it matters about how you present what you do at the end of the day yeah and that's the message and you're very, you very in depth and you're very good at that's one of your strong suits so let's go back since we we wanted to talk about the launch but let's go back into the conversation let's i mean i was there for day one so yeah I'm yeah, like, sorry, yeah, let's I'll, like let's just go. Yeah, I'll, I'll hear I want to hear your take. I'll give you my take on day one and then you can get into a bit more detail on day two because you, you were there um in terms of what the messaging was. So so let's talk about day one, the type of speakers that they had and what the messaging was to you. Um Okay, I can start. Yes. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> day two is more in my it's mind. It's in your mind than right like, now because it's fresh. The like day one. So once you start talking about it, then I'll like You'll jump recall. in. Yeah. So, so day one, the ones that we attended, they had uh, a PR type marketing agency that works with a lot of clients, both in, in Oh my God, fashion, yes, I didn't know I remember. Fashion, entertainment, uh, and various Sorry. lines in, 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 that, in those segments. And she was talking about brand identity and not just, and you know, it was really cool because she's like, a lot of people just consider brand to be your logo and your colors. And she's like, it, 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 it's so far past that. Like that's an introduction to your brand, but it's not your brand. Yeah. Right. So she was talking about separating and this was a really cool message she, she brought out. She's like, when you're thinking about your brand and you're thinking about your target market and you're thinking about your audience and how you want to, to, to deliver your message, she's like, you have to take yourself out of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's not because you're not delivering that message to yourself. You're delivering it to your audience. Like, for example, she had one example she gave and I might be misquoting it a little bit, but, you know, it was, it was a bunch of younger 20 somethings creating a site to sell product to those between the, the sort of senior citizens, mm. like, you know, 70 and above. Um, so, you know, as much as they understood the market, but they had to take themselves out because it's like, well, what does that market want? Who, you know, what, uh, what is the, the, the missing piece in the puzzle yeah. where this product line comes in? When they look at the website, so important, like how are they going to be able to navigate through that website? So I'm mixing the two, but the, the other guy was talking about yeah, e-commerce. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, how do they navigate through the website versus a millennial looking at a website? You know, if that's your target market, you're going to build your website in a way that that person is more comfortable navigating it. So all this, again, goes back to speaking to your brand. So that was a really big one, I think, for us, because when we were sitting there um, and it's, it, I think it was Carrie Corp, I think was the name, was the name of the... Carrie... Corp, I think it was. It's... it's, it's we'll it's, put it in our description. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so she was speaking about the in her five steps in identifying yes. your brand. And I remember, you know, Rashida, we're sitting there in the audience and... We're having this conversation, and she's having this conversation, and we literally just every like other one like, yeah, we got to think about that one too. And yep. I was like writing it down. We got to think about that yeah. one too, and like it's it was it's not things that you don't know. It's not things that, that are not in your mind. It's the way she positions it for how how you should be branding your 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 and business brand your what, whatever it is that you're working on. And 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 I think <clears throat> also now when you start coming to. The project or the or the the business venture that you want to do that's when these things become more relevant and prominent mm -hmm. because like you said it's not parts of conversations that we've not heard or we are not aware it's how it all ties together it, exactly it's, it's and besides you making fun of my note note taking skills um, i just recorded everything because i was like i'll listen to this later yeah, but Love actually I, writing them all down. Okay, I, I write notes because that's how I get ideas and well, that's was, how well, you well, got a 7 a.m. novel in the morning and then your response to it was like, that's actually so cool. Well, I'm not disagreeing with it. I just wanted you to be able to focus. That's why I was like, I'll record it and then you can listen to it later and take all the notes you want. You can take 400 pages of notes, I don't care. Because you'll always forever have these these <laughs> lectures in your in your pocket. So that's that, that's my only point. You know, but what, I, I have to write while I listen, so that's why. Now, from a fashion perspective, we, we yeah. saw another speaker who was really good, and this was specifically to, uh, you know, being a creative director, art director, and the, 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 the debate, like, I mean, well, for us, it was the debate around what is the title of a creative director versus an art director. And so this, this woman was a consultant or a stylist, but not, she didn't only just do fashion, she did everything fashion. She did arts, lifestyle, she lifestyle, did she art, did everything, she which did, was um, really cool. Yeah. But you know, she was talking about all the kind of stuff that a, a stylist or a fashion shoot stylist would like, you know, a lot of stuff you do, 
the um, the mood boards and you know the location scouting and and, and, and the back to where of the, we... the, the, the outfits and and she really broke down from her perspective what a creative director versus an art director is and she had a very defined to her and, there's a two di totally different things and you know what that's actually very interesting and that's a little back to my point about um when you want to do something it's not about the title and that's always been my like debate in in the city that it's not about the title it's not about it's not about the status it's about doing what you love to do because when she broke down what a what an art 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 director does mm -hmm. what a stylist does and you know all of those things and you and i'm like i'm like wait a minute but i do this and i do this and i do this and then she as she told me you can be both you, you can be a a creative director and the art director and the, the art time. yeah and that's and in some cases the stylist as well right and but the, but the thing is when i do my projects i'm not thinking like oh my god i need that title of a creative director and do it but the, but no. you don't but the but the interesting thing on this is you know, from an industry perspective, if you want to be recognized for doing certain work, the title, no, 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 no. The I, title, I, I, the title I, is what speaks I, to I'm it. I'm not disagreeing about the title speaking to it. I'm just saying that when you are, like, how do I explain it? Um, let me try this again. <laughs> when I take on a project, mm -hmm. my first thought is, is this going to excite me? Am I, like, can I create something amazing out of it, right? Mm -hmm. After that, the title and the responsibilities and the contract and all that, all that stuff comes in. Mm -hmm. But there's a, sh but if you notice, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing, who wants the title and they don't care about the project because they want to put it on the Instagram saying yeah, that yeah. I'm yeah. a creative director. Your yeah, work is going to speak I'm for a, yourself I'm at the end of the day. But, but keep in mind that, that from their perspective, they're looking at, you're looking at the work you're doing and how it's going to speak. They're looking at who's looking at them and what are they going to understand their work to be, whether they're doing it or not. So, right. so from an, from an audience perspective, if they're, if they're if their network has a bunch of photographers, um, magazines, um, different brands, and they keep seeing over and over that she's an art director on her on the on the on the project, that's all they're going to see, and that's right. That's important. But that also pigeonholes you. Like, imagine if. Okay, so let's, and the reason I'm going to have this debate is that, for example, when you and I came up with like, uh, like uh, uh, Elevated Grapes in our podcast and like, and like stuff like that, mm -hmm. imagine if you only saw me as a, as a uh, women's fashion stylist, mm -hmm. you would not come to me and be like, hey, I want you to, like, I want to co-host something with you because one, I don't have the hosting experience or the training or the, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. all, the, all that fancy stuff. To, mm -hmm. to do it plus you'll be like i'm thinking right. men's fashion she only does women so automatically i'm in a pigeonhole but because i do whatever i do first what do you, nobody knows what you do i still find what do you do i'm still trying to like figure out what, what is it that you do all the time i create let's just put it this way now i'm learning Talk to accept that shut up <laughs> <laughs> but you saw my stuff it was like hey she does events she does shoots she According, according to you, I, I do PR, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff. You're like, hey, this is what I have in mind. We took that and we built it to something and all the different elements that are, that are following it, right? Because I wasn't in a, in, in a pigeonhole. I was out of my box, mm -hmm. out of my cage, flying, mm -hmm. flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. And for okay. me, those were like- Now you're a bird. I'm a bird. Yeah, that's great. From a carrot to a bird. That's great, you're now a bird. <laughs> But I mean, like those. Like a budgie like, that you like open the cage and they fly around the house. So that's what you are. Outside the house, freedom, freedom. Yeah. That that reminds me. I need my new tattoos. It'll be like all birds flying over here. Okay, like, can we focus? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so that was like one of my. <laughs> so 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 that was. I mean, one it, it created of my... an it created an interesting conversation for us on the, on the yeah because that was your question and we just like well let's just and ask we exactly. wanted your take so we asked we asked that question which was. I mean, What's the get, difference between the and you had a, you had a separate conversation with that with speaker her. afterwards? Yeah. And so how how did that go? Uh, I I got her email. I sent her an email, and I am gonna talk. We just talked for a while. So what was there anything specific that you learned from that conversation? Which that was could, that was a good you could do both, right? It mm -hmm. depends what the project is, what the scope is, and and you know, the same thing she, like she said and a bunch of others. It's how passionate you are about what you're doing yeah i mean so so for those that are listening or watching we'll put the description of the people we're speaking about uh, in our description 
uh, just because sometimes, you know, we're in the moment, we don't really remember the names and probably should have written it down, but we'll have it. Danny, we'll have it listed. Danny Reynolds was her name. Yeah, we'll just we'll list them all just so that it's it's easy to reference if anybody wants to um, look them up. Because again, these are all great speakers and doing well in their worlds and their in their specific uh, markets and industries. And they're all very closely aligned with with Daniel's Artscape and Launchpad. And they yeah. work and so that's how they've they've sort of helped to build their career, which is a, a great platform again for artists of, of various backgrounds. I, 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 I think it's really cool that, that there's a focus now on artists, uh, different types of uh, artists like even, absolutely there were a lot of hosts over there although there was they had of, well they had the next they had a whole filmmakers panel yeah. where they had the international programmer for tiff they had uh a director now i forget his name but he's he does major movies but started off in toronto mm -hmm. um and then the other the other gentleman um now i forget what, what his role was but again they were talking about film making and you know for those that don't necessarily get through the, t the their shorts or their features through the the tiff gauntlet uh, to get featured in TIFF and they talked about, you know, certain directors even that are well known, how maybe TIFF is not necessarily the right, even if it's own, in your own backyard, it's not necessarily the right platform no. for them. So they were talking about filmmakers and how to get your film out there if you're not selected through TIFF or through the regular right. process. So again, very interesting for filmmakers. They had a conversation uh, just about, you know, they had, they had music executives out. So they had Manifesto, who's who's a, a major proponent of music, just uh, music yeah. promotion and marketing and, and building artists. They had Sony, Sony, Sony Music, uh, they had AR. The, yeah, they had the AR, AR for Sony and they had the AR for Arts and Crafts, which is yeah, an Arts and Crafts. Crafts, yeah. Arts and, Arts and so they had a whole conversation around, around the come up in, in, in sort of the music industry and where Toronto right now is sort of the hub and getting for the recognition music, for it. And, you know, and, and the lady from Manifesto was, was really interesting because she's like, you know, I have, a, I have missed meetings with Atlantic, you know, Atlantic Music P, Executive VP from the U.S., um, a couple other, you know, major music labels. There, she mentioned that they're regular, and they're regularly in the city, talking to these executives about how to build the Toronto market a little bit more and how to gain access to some of these artists. The other thing that she said was that was um, really, really interesting was just the fact that the come up is the come up is not necessarily through these labels. You got to find your niche and focus yeah. on building. If you think that you want to get into Atlantic or Sony, maybe it's not the right. The right hub for you. One of the one of the uh, the people in the audience made a comment about you know in the states, it just seems like the music industry there. Like if there's a he was referenced Atlanta in specific, and he's like in Atlanta, he's like I, you know I know a lot of folks there. They spend a lot of time cross promoting each other. The music mm -hmm. industry supports each other. If a specific agent or manager is busy but finds a good a good potential artist, they, you know they they may not just turn it down. They may refer it to one of their friends yep. who who de who has the same network and can help them out. Where he goes here, we don't. We don't do that. The Sony doesn't speak to Manifesto, doesn't speak to Arts and Crafts, and there's no cross, you know, but cross I mean, here. So the, the point he made, the point she made that she goes, yes, you're right. And she goes, that we do have to work on that in our own city. But she goes, but she was talking along the lines of how fresh the, the like the new wave of music is in Toronto and how like now it's getting the attention. So she's like, we're still eons behind where the states are in terms of building, building that, that platform for our artists. But but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not the right approach. Like Pressa, she was it was an amazing hip hop artist or local urban artist, a Canadian artist, and he didn't want to sign. He got offered from U.S. labels. He wouldn't didn't want to do it because he want, wants to represent Toronto. So, and I and I and that's one of the messaging that also followed on the Sunday. And there's another mm -hmm. messaging that was kind of like I think that messaging was very clear on both days. And and and, and I'll speak about it because that's what we do. We we talk about these things. Um, so we're jumping into Sunday now. I will take from Pieces. my, yeah. Um, okay. So I do agree with the whole in Toronto, we do not cross promote. And I agree that we are very clicky over here. And I've, and I've always said that. So, mm -hmm. what, so what we heard on Saturday in terms of that aspect, and I, and I think we heard that, that bits and pieces all, all throughout the day in, in, in various you know, um, conversations mm -hmm. and form. And it's unfortunate. But it's true. It's actually very, very true. And it, it's, it's sad, it sucks, uh, because just imagine how much we can achieve if we all actually were so secure in our craft and what we do, and we have no problem like promoting or cross-promoting somebody else within that field. Like, and it's not only about music, it's about any creative mm -hmm. uh, field that, that, mm -hmm. that we do, right? 
Um, well, I think we, we had a conversation about this earlier while, while we were running around today, but I think it's, it's you know, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's an insecurity, but it's, a, it's a, almost for a lot of folks, it's protecting their, their own interests. Now, and, and I'm going to now take exactly what you said there, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you, but because you were not there on Sunday, the, there were not just, it wasn't just a conversation with Director X that was there. It's not just a conversation about, um, with the other, uh, with the with music PR that happened before him, mm-hmm. um, and about the creating, a, uh, making your mark type of thing in the fashion industry that happened before that as well. Because these were people. This was on Sunday. Yeah, these were all people. I just barged my way in. I was like, "Yeah, I'm Rashi, and I have to meet you." Um, it's it's they all had the same messaging. It's not about one, and, and there's two messages in, in general over here. It's not about um, why we do not like. It's, it's, sorry, it's not it's not it's not about us being insecure and protecting our craft because we all bring different things to the table. Of course. Uh, what what I can do is very different from what you can do. Yet we can still work work with each other. Sure. It's also um, it's it's that we need to get out of this mentality that only what we want is here. Yeah. Like we are actually scared that there is um, like there isn't enough for like everyone over here. Right. So that's one of the main things, and that that followed everywhere. Like even this like amazing producer guy that I think he became my like idol after I heard his speech. And Director like, X? No. Before. He's a director. Huh? She, call, she calls him Dr. X. Yeah, I, I sometimes mix up into Dr. X, but I'm talking so, about this like producer. Mr. X, Director X, we apologize ahead of time. If you ever if we ever end up having a conversation and Rashi <laughs> calls you Dr. X, we'll refer you back to this show and you can know why it happens. No, but so like... Literally, every every time we're having it, she's like, so Dr. X, I'm like, who, <laughs> who is Dr. X? He's the guy who's healing us and how to do our shit properly. There you so go. What, so what was, Director X had a couple of really interesting key messages you were saying. Prior to him, this producer guy mm-hmm. that I heard, and I actually reached out to him as well, was um, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Same messaging. You have to be so secure in your craft and what you do that people don't want to even get paid and they just want to do your stuff Well, we did that. You. you did, that, you did right? that one post with the quote from Director X, which was what? Oh, <laughs> hire me because I'm better than him. Say it again. <laughs> hire me because I'm better than him. And that's what I do anyways. And, he goes, and he's like, that's my pitch. But, but, but you know what? So that was one of his things. It's, it's not even about necessarily knowing what you're doing. It's again, being so passionate. So Rashi's suggestion is don't worry about what you know or don't know. Just go and do it. You know what? I, I will say some of my best projects, and I will get into trouble for this at some point. Always. Some of my some of my best projects, I had no fucking clue what I was doing. No you idea. You need your own PR because if you say stuff, it's gonna get you in trouble. <laughs> I had no idea, but I would pitch it. I what would... she meant was she was so eager she learned for the role. <laughs> I did learn though. So like one okay, one quick example is when I did this EDM you music have, you festival. Have Twenty seconds. When she stop interrupting me. So when I did this like EDM music festival. I have no clue how that stuff works. All this, all the music sounds the same to me. And, but this was like five years ago, okay? And That's for, the beauty of it. It is the same. And for two <laughs> years in a row, I ended up dancing on stage with, with, with all the DJs and like managing their like social media. And I have no clue how that works. But I, you know what? I still gave a pitch. I was like, hey, this is what I can do. This is what the industry is. And I went for it. Didn't know anything, but I got it. Why? Because I knew I was still better than any other person they would hire for that job, right? So I, I just did that. And I do that with all my stuff. And you know that. Don't, don't give me that look. You know that. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering when this rant is going to be complete. It's not a rant. So that was one of his key takeaways. Okay. And the other is your vibe is your tribe, which is something I've always liked. Like, you are the sum, and it's true, you are the sum of the five people that you hang out with. If you hang out with uninspiring idiots, you will be one. If you hang out with people who push you, who who make you face the truth, or who say, you know what, you are better than this and go achieve it, watch your life. You'll be doing yeah. some ma- amazing things. That's a, bi- that's right? a big takeaway. So, um, because I wasn't yeah. there for the second day, my, my main takeaway was the brand strategy that we spoke about. <laughs> and and I think that was a big takeaway. We'll put the contact for Carrie Corp on there so you guys can look her up for her information. But all in all, great learning experience and great for the arts platform of any sort in, in the city. Cool. I'm getting the... Things, yeah. so, so I will not say anything. You did, you did your last piece already. That's why I wrapped up. What All right, guys. Mean? Thank you for tuning in. We will see you next week. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, thank you for watching that podcast or that video. Um, if you like what you hear and you want to hear more of us and see some of our behind the scenes stuff, subscribe below. Yes, hit that little red, like, you know, button thingy that's over there and hit subscribe and keep following us for a lot more cool, fun stuff. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you soon.